Hey everyone, so I'm just going to make a little video showing the progress of my nav meshing tool that I've been working on. So this came about because the uh, I was trying to generate procedurally generated dungeons and realized that I wasn't able to load the nav mesh uh, in via code. So I started exploring other ways of loading nav meshes. So what I'm going to do is I've got this cell here. And I'm going to delete this nav mesh. Absolutely sure. Save that out, and then I'm going to load up the creation kit and just show you that the nav mesh is not there anymore. And then I'm going to generate a new nav mesh for this cell. Okay, so we have ice link here. So this is the level that I built to release with 1.4, but it has many annoying ramps and rocks lying about, which made it very difficult to manually nav mesh. And I literally gave up and just pulled it from the release. So you can see there's no nav mesh in this level. Um, it's just, it's a pain, especially there's a bit at the end here. If I go over here, yes, where there's a tiny ledge leading to a small bridge that loops around and trying to make that manually just was far too annoying so I didn't bother which led to the uh, development of this nav meshing tool so the way it works is it is a spell uh, it's basically a script that you trigger the start of and um, Undaunted will start recording your position uh, multiple times a second so we'll get in and I'll set it going and you can see how it goes save game standing at the undaunted camp you're a long way from home and traveler rocking are Sophia. you really Trying so undaunted as just... to approach my camp this teaches me the power so next i can uh, teleport to that cell Okay, so here we are in the cell at the entrance, and I'm going to use this power. Okay, so now it's starting to capture the um, my position in the cell and record it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sprint about. So the basic idea here is we're making a nav mesh off areas the player has walked off. So you kind of just want to dander about in any way that looks vaguely walkable. Try avoid jumping because the height difference will it'll think it's solid ground when it isn't. Um, you can walk over rocks and stuff, it does take into account that kind of stuff. So just quickly blast through this. I'm, you can spend more time doing this, I'm just gonna kind of just quickly go through just to show you what it can do. Do some areas of interest as well. Okay. So You'll see that Sophia is completely stuck because she has no nav mesh, so she has no idea what's going on in the level. Um, the mod she comes from does try and keep her kind of level with you, which is why she's teleporting kind of silently behind me. As creepy as that is. But. So. Okay, now this is the nasty bit. You can see here that we've got this tiny ledge, which we try and we move over a bridge. Not not perfect, but so we'll end that by using the invocation. Obviously, we'll develop a different part in the future. Okay, so that's good. We can quit Skyrim now. So what that has done is there is a log file in where the SK, SKSE logs are called navmesh.pass. It's a Pascal file. So we'll reload that, 
and you can see it's populated it with a Skyrim Special Edition Edit script. So this is a script that has all the vertices and triangles um, built up from where we were walking. So I'll very quickly explain how that works. Basically what we do is we have a mark tile. So this gets called multiple times a second, gets the player's location and basically sets that position as active. So we set all those positions as active and then when we export, we loop through the entire map and build up uh, quads and link them together to represent the nav mesh. So we will take that script file. Oh, wrong one. Yeah, so this is the script file we've made. We're going to paste it in here and load up SSE edit. Okay, so we'll find that cell. You can see we don't have a nav mesh at the minute, and I'm going to apply that, see that nav mesh script, which has all these verts and stuff. So that'll take over for a second. So they, basically this is the SSE is acting as a bridge between the C++ code, which understands the locations and the actual format that the ESP needs. So you can see here, we've created a new nav mesh with all the vertices and triangles. However, there's no nav mesh grid, so we'll save that. Okay, close that and open up the editor. Link. Right, so you can see we have a nav mesh now, and if we click this, you can see we've got a pretty rough because I was a bit hasty in it, but it's uh, recorded. You can see it's recorded where I was down this ramp, so it can handle uh, slight gradients to some extent. And then I went around there, and over here, down this gradient, up here, along there. And okay, so this is one of the problem areas at the minute. So this is the, so you can see the way that it works. It works in a tile based system. So there wasn't enough accuracy in the tiles to record this. Um, it, the, the size of the tile is configurable in the code. However, you, it's a trade off between capturing the nice easy areas and capturing the fiddly bits. So you can see it, it did a decent job. It, it had a vague idea of where all these should go and it's recorded. So if I, you can see we've got the kind of vague shape of the dungeon. So next we're going to, um, I mentioned before the nav mesh thing isn't generated, the nav mesh grid. So I make a slight edit and I save it. And what that does is the construction kit goes and builds that data from what it had. And then the next thing I tend to do is optimize. So use my headset turning off um, so that yeah I'm still recording. Um, that simplifies the mesh and it will if so if there was multiple you can see here's a good example there was multiple squares in a row and it's joined them all together so that just kind of makes it a lot easier on the engine so one last thing I'll show you before we show off in the game um, so this is not a real nav mesh this is this is exactly the same as if you built all of this by hand so what we're going to do is, let's say here, for example, we can just select these and build, continue to build this nav mesh as you would before. Um, so it's, it's a starting point for, it gives you a good chunk of all the easy bits. Um, and then you have to probably go and do any really fiddly bits, but that is dramatically improved. I can see here, for example, there's a there's a gap. So we'll just create. So I am not the best nav measure, which is why I built an automated tool to do it for me. 
because I do not have the patience to draw triangles indefinitely. And also knowing which triangles to draw is always a problem. Just want to make sure she can get down this ramp. I mean, that works. That's not good, but that works. Oh, so you can see why I avoided doing nav meshes by hand. They're quite slow to build. Okay, that looks decent enough. That's going to give us vaguely close enough. Okay, so save that. So you can see also the number of tries in that nav mesh has dropped dramatically now that I've done that optimization. So that's the final test. We'll hop back into Skyrim and we should be able to guide Sophia through that dungeon, or most of it, because I kind of rushed it. But So obvious things about that tool, um, it works in any cell. It, it didn't know anything specific about that particular um, cell. You know, You're a there's long nothing way from it's home, just in some player's location. Are you really so um, the, the fact that the script file is produced means that it can be applied to any ESP. So it works yeah, if you're building your own mod. You know, you don't have, you just need the, the undaunted running. You can use the tool and then apply the mesh to your own mod. Ice Lake. I, I made an instance called Ice Lake and Ice Cave and I keep typing wrong ones. Okay, so here we are again. Uh, Sophia is now walking. So you can see she's navigating the nav mesh. If I just jumped on you, I'm laser. So one thing I've noticed, large boulders, it doesn't take into account that. But come on. There we go. Yeah. Just again, another ramp. Yeah, so she pretty much figured that out. Okay, maybe the bottom of that ramp isn't joined properly, but you can see it's. Uh, yeah. Have yeah, you so ever it's, it's given us like 80, 90 percent of like a working now. Someone is sitting there um, playing with us, like some which adult play is thing. a huge jump up from the other <laughs> no, So mean, you can see that uh, when it was displaying the nav mesh, there wasn't. It wasn't doing the ceiling. It wasn't. Uh, doing multiple layers in one place is a pretty efficient there. Yeah, so that's it. That's the, the first part of the Skyrim nav meshing tool. Um, the one thing I will say is that so we're currently marking a tile via the player's position but the long-term goal is to be able to mark tiles based on um, JSON config files so that'll allow me to do build time generation of dungeons so if you have a block a corridor and you know which tiles it will fill in for the nav mesh you'll be able to generate the entire dungeon take those tiles map them out and build a nav mesh instantly for the dungeon so that's the, the long-term plan yeah, so this is all up on GitHub. Uh, you can just pull it down and it should work for you. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks for your time.